G'day mate and welcome to Oxygen Included with me, Jelly. Today we're going to cover all things power. We're going to cover our generators, our wires, our transformers and our batteries. So we start off uh, with some very, very basic power uh, items. We actually start off with a manual generator. It's one of the, it's the only generator we start with and it's also the worst generator we, that we have. Um, it produces 400 watts worth of power for an output of heat of 1000 duplicate thermal units worth of heat, which is honestly not a lot of heat. You probably never have to worry about it. And if Bubbles goes and jumps on her wheel, she will go uh, and put power through these wires and recharge these two batteries over here, which we'll get to shortly. The manual generator, the coal generator, and the wood burner all share two things in common. One, they have this battery recharge threshold, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, the other thing is they all output carbon dioxide. So in the case of the manual generator, it's actually the duplicate outputting two grams per second of carbon dioxide. In the case of the coal burner, we can see it outputs 20 grams per second, and the wood burner outputs a whopping 170 grams per second. So back to the coal generator. It outputs 600 watts worth of power, which is 50% more than what we have in the manual generator. Um, it also outputs 9,000 heat units, which is a lot of heat, to be honest. Um, it is something you're going to have to keep an eye on. Along with that carbon dioxide number, that carbon dioxide number is equivalent to 10 dupes running around your base. So it is something you're going to have to take care of sooner or later. Um, our third generator is the wood burner. Now, the wood burner has been a recent addition to the game. It's actually... It's not very good at producing power, let's be honest. Um, it takes in 1.2 kilos of lumber per second, which is not that much. We do have some significant lumber sources around the map. Uh, but it also outputs only 300 watts worth of power compared to the manual generator's original 400 watts. And it outputs 170 grams per second of carbon dioxide for the exact same amount of heat as the coal generator. So the wood burner... The thing it actually excels at is producing carbon dioxide. That's really about it. Um, as I said, all these three generators have this battery recharge threshold, and Bubbles is just about to fill up this battery. When she does... Oh, she jumped off a little bit early. Yeah, she jumped off a little bit early. She, she just had to make a mess, because that's how Bubbles is. Anyway, um, these three generators have a battery recharge threshold, which means when the battery falls below whatever this threshold is, it'll inversely send a signal magically through the power lines to one of these three generators to get them back up and running. If we just clean up the area for bubbles, um, she won't jump back on this generator until these batteries are below 50% charge. Now, if I put multiple different batteries, actually, if I just duplicate this battery, put it on there, we can see because that battery is below 50% charge, she's going to jump back on the wheel and she's going to charge things up. The coal generator and the wood burner both have an internal buffer. Um, it's... I know for the coal generator, it is uh, 600 kilograms and it burns one kilogram per second of coal. So a duplicate can fill this up once per cycle and it will just run. But because this battery recharge th threshold, it will keep running until it runs out of, uh, until it runs out of coal. And then it will only send that command for a duplicate to refill it up if this battery recharge threshold is too low. Uh, if the batteries are below the battery recharge threshold. God, mix of words. So, um, same with the wood burner. I really, really, really recommend that if you're still using these early game, you can actually set this number very, very low, hoping that the power that you produce will get either stored in batteries or used without too much wasted power. I normally set these to around about 10%. Um, probably a little bit higher for the wood burner because it just produces a ridiculously crap amount of power. Um, and hopefully you won't then waste too much power into the batteries. Now the batteries is probably the next thing we should really, really cover. We get three dif different types of batteries. We get a battery, a jumbo battery, and a smart battery. The battery is crap. I'll be perfectly honest. It is absolutely crap. It stores 10... Uh, 10,000 joules worth of power, which is not actually that much. Um, it also has a runoff rate of 1,000 joules per cycle. So after 10 cycles, this battery will be flat. Even if I do nothing with it, it will just be flat. Um, the jumbo battery holds four times the amount of power. So it's up to 40,000 kilojoules worth of power. And it, its runoff rate is only twice as much. So it's going to last 20 uh, cycles before it runs out of power. Ideally, you're using the power as fast as you're making the power. But at the end of the, the day, 
um, for twice the uh, base cost of the battery and storing twice the amount of power. Very, very good upgrade. One I normally end up taking every single game. Uh, Heat-wise, they both output the exact same amount of heat. We do have one more battery type, which is the smart battery. This is the most common battery you'll see throughout bases, purely because they're, they're highly, highly efficient. Um, they are made of refined metal, so it takes you a little bit longer to get to them. They also have an automation overlay, which we'll get to in a second. So they... Our battery does 10,000, our jumbo battery does 40,000 uh, kilojoules worth of power. Our smart battery only does 20,000 kilojoules. So it's half the size of the jumbo battery, but it does have less than half the heat output as the jumbo battery. It also has a very, very, very low power runoff. It does not lose that much power per cycle, which is a wonderful thing. It means they can be charged up and potentially even left for a significant amount of time before they actually run flat. On top of that, as I said, with that automation, we can actually go into this battery and say, hey, we want you at 90% to send an automation signal via an automation wire, which I'll build in a sec, to our generators to turn off. And when the battery gets down to 20%, I want you to turn back on. And we can take this automation wire and connect it to our machines. And we can see because this battery is less than 20%, uh, we have a green signal saying go to all these generators and that battery can be recharged. If uh, once the battery goes above 90%, it'll actually send a red signal to all these generators and have them automatically turn off. So our next generators being the hydrogen, the natural gas, the petroleum generator as our, are our real steps where they no longer require duplicate interaction. These can be fed by either liquid pipes or gas pipes and they just run. So our hydrogen generator uh, uses 100 grams per second of hydrogen, which is not an awful lot. It also produces 800 watts worth of power. So we're now talking twice the amount we had in our manual generator uh, for 4,000 heat units, which is actually not that much. Um, if you remember our coal generators, we're putting out 9,000 and we've probably already dealt with that by that stage. So going down to 4,000, actually a big re uh, relief. The hydrogen generator takes in a gas intake and that's it, it just creates power. Nice, brilliant system, we love it. Our second big generator we get is a natural gas generator. Now, natural gas generator uh, and the petroleum genera generator are very, very special. They have one input and two outputs. And we can see with the natural gas generator, we're actually putting in 90 grams per second of natural gas, and we're actually outputting that exact same amount of mass as both polluted water and carbon dioxide. And it also, same as the hydrogen generator, makes 800 watts worth of power. So these two are exactly identical in power output. Um, it just depends on which gas you have the most of that you want to actually feed into the generators. On top of that, it outputs 10,000 uh, heat units, which is a little bit more than the coal generator. As I said, you've probably already dealt with that at this stage, so it's not that bad. As for the carbon dioxide and the polluted water, so we can see we have a gas input being this pipe right here. Um, that's where we pump in the natural gas. As for the carbon dioxide, we actually have a output pipe right here, which we can either run off to a far corner of the base to dump the carbon dioxide elsewhere, or we can have it just run straight to a vent and vent into the room that the generator's in. Uh, as for the polluted water, if we bring up the liquid overlay, we can see there is no liquid overlay for the natural, uh, natural gas generator. It actually dumps its polluted water out this little spout at the bottom, and this is why I've built it over mesh tiles. Because it's built over mesh tiles, the water will pass straight through, and then I can use this pump to actually pick it up and take it elsewhere. Our next list is our petroleum generator. As you can see, it actually takes in two kilograms per second of a combustible liquid. Now, the options are petroleum and uh, ethanol. Ethanol is, again, one of those new things that have been, just been released in this update. It also outputs carbon dioxide and polluted water, same as our natural gas generator did, but it also outputs 2,000 watts worth of power. So that's a significant amount of power, along with 20,000 heat units. So it's actually a very, very hot machine as well. So this is something you'll probably have to keep cool as well. Uh, as for our plumbing input, so we have a plumbing input for our petroleum or ethanol. And unlike the natural gas generator, this has no gas output. It actually just expels the uh, carbon dioxide into the environment around it, out through this gas filter. And the polluted water, same story, it's why it's built above mesh tiles. It just falls through the bottom. And again, I'd use a pump to collect it and then ship it off to elsewhere. So, 
These are very, very powerful. They're really that mid game. In saying that, coal generators tend to last throughout the whole game because if you have any sort of hatch farm producing coal, you can quite happily continue to use coal generators for the whole game. The next two uh, fall under the renewable energy category. So we have a solar panel and a steam turbine. Now, these are a little bit special. Solar panels require sunlight, obviously, and if you've ever tried it at home by getting like a little light and shining it above a solar power calculator and see it doesn't turn on, it doesn't quite work to put a couple of lamps above. You can actually bring in, in sandbox, if, because I'm in sandbox mode, I need to do it. We can bring in shine bugs, shine nymph, and if I put some in here, I have, I have no idea how many. Uh, I can't see how many I've got. I've got, say, 10. 10 in there, and I am producing the grand total of 33.71 watts. Not a lot of not a lot of power from half a dozen shine bugs uh, or shine nymphs. It can it is possible to power these up with shine, shine bugs. It does require a lot of effort and a lot of uh, light being put out by the shine nymphs. Realistically, you're going to put solar panels at the very, very top of the base, exposed to space and exposed to light up there. But it also means at the same time you have to defend them in some way, shape, or form from meteorites. Um, so yeah, solar panels is one of the renewable resources. The other renewable resource we have is steam turbines. So if we go back to our, uh, our power overlay, solar actually outputs no heat whatsoever. So it's actually a very, very powerful um, power generator. The catch is it's a little bit awkward to deal uh, to deal with because you have to protect it from those meteorites. Steam turbine outputs up to four, uh, 850 watts worth of power and 4,000 duplicate thermal units worth of heat. But it's a little bit special because it's taking in hot steam at the bottom. Uh, actually, let's just, let's just build another one to example with. So as you can see, it has these vents down here where it absorbs heat and steam in. And it'll actually take that steam, cool it down, and turn that steam back into water in this output pipe, and then it can vent that somewhere. Now, steam turbines are nine times out of ten actually used to delete heat because that's what they actually excel in, not really making power. The power is sort of a byproduct, which is a great thing, but it requires a couple of specific circumstances. So steam obviously has to be water at above 100 degrees Celsius. It's actually gonna be above 125 degrees Celsius for the steam turbine to even turn on. On top of that, you need to actually keep the steam turbine below around about 200 degrees Celsius, otherwise it overheats. And the steam as well has to be below 250 degrees Celsius. Well, it doesn't have to be, but should be if you wanna maintain maximum efficiency. Anything over that, uh, temperature-wise, doesn't actually increase the performance of the steam generator. Um, it's sort of that, that, that magic point where it sort of tops out. Now, before we play with the steam generators too much more, I actually wanna go sh talk about power-wise a little bit. So, no, actually, we'll, yeah, we'll talk about power-wise for a little bit. So, as you can see, I have, um, well, there's three, four, four different types of power-wise. So, we have our st standard wire that we start with, which has a maximum wattage of 1,000 watts. And this is a lovely wire that I can build through tiles anywhere I want. Um, it's it's great. It's, it's really, really handy. Uh, but it does have very, very low wattage. And if I just hook that up to there, we can see that this is all gone white because it's all connected. I can build wire bridges to build one power network over another. And honestly, early, early game, you can see my circuit status is zero of zero watts. To overload the wire, which is actually really, really easy to do, a thousand watts is not a lot of power. Um, if I hook up these two pumps, you can see my circuit status is now, I'm using zero watts out of a maximum of 480. The important number is the number on the left cannot go over a thousand. So if we go over to food and I put a fridge in here, we can now see I'm using 120 of a possible 600 watts. If I took that up to 1500 watts of whatever amount of watts, I'd actually end up blowing these wires in most circumstances. So to get around that, you actually get a better 
uh, a better, well, a couple of better t types of wires as the game progresses. So the next one that most, pe most people commonly use is conductive wire. Conductive wire costs the same amount as normal wire, um, being 25, 25 metal, but it's actually refined metal. So it's a little bit more expensive to get, but also comes with the advantage of it now has a maximum power of two kilowatts. So it takes, it can move twice the amount of power. Um, same story as normal wire. It, I can place this anywhere through tiles without a problem. And it just runs, it, it's basically a one for one replacement for your normal wire. You can even actually, if I wasn't in debug mode, I'd show you. You can actually just take your conductive wire and paint it over the normal wire and the duplicates will just go through and upgrade it over time. The next two, hang on, stop again. The next two bits of wire we have is actually heavy watt wire and conductive heavy watt wire. And again, the, the difference between these guys is one requires raw metal, one requires refined metal. Heavy watt wire has a maximum power of 20 kilowatts. There are two caches with that. One, I can't make it go through walls. It just refuses to go through walls. Um, the heavy watt conductive wire is the exact same. It will not go through a wall. The only way to get it to go through walls is with a joint plate, which means you're going to need to replace a block with a joint plate, which will carry the power through one, well, from one room to the next room. But it also means I can't place it through doorways or anything like that. It, it physically needs to either run through a gap in the tiles or run through a heavy watt joint plate. On top of that, it has a small decor um, hit. So we have a minus 25 decor for the heavy watt wire. For the actual conductive heavy watt wire, it's only minus 20. Um, you can use different refined metals. So if I used uh, gold, I'd have a decor bonus of plus 10%. And for heavy watt conductive wire, if I used actual refined gold, I would have a decor of plus 50%. Plus 50% for minus 20 means it's not as bad, but it's still pretty bad. Um, on top of that, both these actually have 20 kilowatts worth of power they can actually carry through the base. The other problem they have with them is the decor hit. So as I said, um, the decor is pretty bad with these two. Um, we can see, so what do we have? We have minus 186 on this tile. And because I've actually used conductive heavy watt wire here, uh, that is made out of copper ore and that one's made out of copper. So that does have a conductive heavy watt wire has a plus 10%, I believe. No, plus 20% and stock has a plus zero. No, plus 10%. So I do have some sort of decor bonus by using um, different types of refined metals. But as you can see, a total decor of minus 131 is going to make a duplicate very, very, very sad. But as I said, the biggest problem with this wire is you can't actually run it through anything. So to get around that, we can use power transformers. Now, power transformers are a little bit special and a little bit unique. Uh, our first transformer we get access to is just the basic power transformer, which has a little bit of an internal buffer. As you can see here, it has a certain amount of joules it can cache up to be then used elsewhere um, on top of that it had it puts out 1000 uh 1000 heat units and it doesn't have a runoff like a battery in saying that they're not exactly cheap to build and they're pretty actually poor at storing um charge very very poor in fact uh they also where are we power capacity uh it also only puts out a thousand watts worth of power. Um, there we go, the power capacity, thousand joules. So it only outputs 1000 watts worth of power at any time. So running into a power transformer means you can step from heavy watt wire back down to normal wire without any cost. And it also means because the power transformer is in the middle, you have no risk of overloading this circuit, um, which we'll go through in just a second. And the other power transformer we get access to is the large power transformer. Again, same story. You can hook this straight up to our heavy watt wire and eventually, hopefully, to charge. If I put that on there, you're going to be happy now. Uh, our large power transformer can actually uh, output 4,000 watts worth of power, but we don't have any 
uh, wire that can handle 4,000 watts. So it's something that you need to use very, very carefully to make sure you do not overload the circuit that it's connected, that it's outputs connected to. Um, and same story, it puts out a certain amount of heat, has a certain amount of uh, battery, uh, what well, has a, a larger internal battery, it has a 4,000 joules compared to our power transformer, it only has 1,000 joules. Uh, but like I said, also puts out significantly more power um, onto the wire that's connected to, which does run the risk of blowing things up. So back to our steam generators. If I just deconstruct these buildings, which will let my steam run into my steam generators, which are already too hot. Uh, where do we want? We want a heat gun. I want to set you to cold. And very, very small. Even colder. I don't actually know whether I can cool these guys down now. Okay, right, um, so I'm going to put a cut in here and I'm just going to fix this real quick. And fix. So, I've got... No, unfixed. Mop. Thank you. So, I've got two uh, steam generators here. As you can see, they're both humming along quite happily. Outputting 500... Uh, 850 watts apiece. And that's coming along this conductive wire. I even actually put down some batteries so we can go well over 1,000 watts worth of power. Um... Uh, energy so power production is 2000 kilowatts we're only consuming a thousand watts the rest is actually going to storage so where this is one of the things with the way oxygen included works and calculates their power it doesn't matter how much is being produced on the cable if it's going to storage i.e batteries it matters about how much you're actually drawing off the cable so in my case i'm only drawing a thousand watts off the cable because i'm running through a power transformer the power transformer only has the light cable on the power transformer. So it, the power transformer is capping the output of the heavy watt wire down to a thousand watts. And at the same time, it's making sure that this wire doesn't blow. Even though I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 refrigerators on there at 120 watts each, which is like 560 watts worth of power. As you can see, my circuit status is always 960 of 1560 watts until this little internal buffer in my transformer actually builds all the way up when it builds all the way up it does have a small burst where it can output extra power onto these refrigerators and you'll see these guys will power up for just a half a second before their power turns off because it's a short burst and especially because it's a short burst through a power transformer i will never actually blow this circuit i can leave this running for a thousand cycles without any hassles because the power transformer is for most of the time oh duplicate died oops uh, the power transformer is most of the time actually limiting the power throughput through these wires uh and as you can see my steam turbines are heating up slowly they actually cap out at 100 degrees once they hit 100 degrees celsius they will actually stop uh running because they've got too hot um but yeah the I said the way uh oh, it was bubbles who died i apologize bubbles hang on i'll grab your replacement uh and bubbles can go over there there you go grossman so um that was one of the things i really wanted to to explain is power transformers are are very very handy for limiting your power circuits it's quite reasonable early game to have two coal generators on a power circuit along with possibly your original manual generator which gives you with cold, two coal generators running, running gives you uh, 1,200 watts worth of potential power onto the circuit. If a dupe happened to grab on, jump on the wheel as well, that could potentially take you up to 1,600 watts on the circuit. As said, putting that amount of power into batteries is perfectly fine, but if we start pulling that amount of power or anything over 1,000 watts off the network, that's when we're going to run really run the risk of blowing power power wires, which could be anywhere along that uh, that long power wire that could span from one end of your base to the other. One of the ways around that is to use a power transformer. Power transformers are super, super, super cheap. Um, it's just 200 metal. Any unrefined metal will do. If we pop 
that power transformer on that network, which of course needs a ground to stand on. Um, if I put a power transformer on this network and then connect my outputs behind the power transformer, it means I move down to this situation where I cannot possibly blow the network by having too much draw on the network. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys found it helpful. Uh, I need to thank uh, Gossman, my replacement, for coming along and helping me out with this video. Uh, as always, if you like the video, found it helpful, click the like button. If you're looking for more tutorial videos like this and new player guides, by all means, click the subscribe button because we're going to have a couple of these, a couple more of the videos like this coming out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video. All right, bye.